Hello, welcome to Garage. I'm Fast Rod. And as you could tell by the title of this video, I will be talking about the uh, HVAC unit, particularly to that of the uh, Cor uh, Chrysler Corvega Atomic V8. Um, that will be the topic of this video. It'll be the HVAC unit uh, or the heating ventilating and air conditioning um, in this video <laughs> uh, I will be covering that I will be discussing it you know at least uh, heating air conditioning in terms of you know what it would what it would function and what it would most likely be in the fallout universe and particularly in this you know to this specific uh, vehicle now to start off i want to explain something right off the bat just looking at the car and looking at the design of the car and how you know the car is modeled and rendered and everything um, from an automotive standpoint and very likely from an engineering standpoint i want to make it clear that it would be quite challenging to put an air conditioning system that could sufficiently cool off the interior of this car uh, just because of the fact that the interior looks to be rather spacious and very luxurious so meaning that it would have a lot of leather portions to the interior uh, seats um, door covers and all sorts of uh, items like that and once again the challenges to that are leather gets hot and it gets hot really quickly um vehicles with leather interior are very challenging to keep cool uh during the hot summer weather um but nonetheless you know of course we're talking about a fictional universe where uh, potentially you know uh, air conditioning systems are very potent and stuff like that so who knows but um, also to that they would be very difficult to keep warm in during cold climates uh, just because of the aforementioned challenges that leather presents so with all that said um, the next thing would be to just kind of get into it and uh, first recall a little bit from the um, you know previous video uh, that being the actual uh, fallout vehicle and ride designs video and in that video uh, I you know briefly mentioned that the you know center windshield or center windscreen of the uh, atomic V8 seems to have this giant, very visible uh, center grill on top of the hood. Um, and that is very likely for this video, the HVAC unit. Um, very likely for that. Um, that is very likely uh, where most, if not all, the components are located. Um, and because of that, um, there are some very interesting things when you actually start to really peel back the layers and really uh, engineeringly, you know, kind of take it apart and really digest everything to that. And um, to add to that, you know, when you actually take a look at some of the uh, stripped out versions of the car that you'll find in the wasteland and you know, among the rest of the Commonwealth and in Appalachia in Fallout 76, you will notice that on the interior, you know, or at least where the interior is at, um, there are holes. There are various holes on what should be the firewall, which is, you know, the thin or thick, depending on the vehicle, uh, you know wall of sheet metal that separates the outside of the car to the inside part of the car you know where you, you know all the passengers sit where you know you have your steering wheel where you have your radio 
where you would you know, want to keep the elements out. There are a couple of holes, and those may be suggesting that, um, you know, either lines or, you know, tubes or rubber hoses or, you know, some kind of um, items are protruding from one side to the other. So uh, those could potentially be for hoses or they could be for metal lines that go through that section in, you know, from one side to the other. Um, and, and those could very likely be specifically for the heating, ventilating, and air conditioning unit. Um, because altogether, it's called a unit, as I, you know, mentioned in the previous uh, video. They are, you know, a unit. It, it is it is all in one. You do not have to take things, you know, apart in pieces per se. Um, you know, usually when you take it out, it, it comes out in a unit, at least in modern cars. I know some, you know, classic, you know, 70s, 60s, and even earlier vehicles in our real world uh, have those in components, you know, you, you have, you know, your lines here for your heating, you know, you have these other, this other section, you know, this panel over here, you got to take that out for, you know, your air conditioning, stuff like that, I'm aware. But in modern vehicles, um, for the most part, I dare say late 80s, maybe even mid 80s, all the way into pretty much current day, um, it is just one giant plastic unit, as I mentioned in the previous video. Uh, really, if you haven't seen that, please go back, watch it. I do elaborate and explain a lot of this, but right now I'm just kind of giving you the quick rundown. Um, but in short, you know, it, it could it could be that. It could be, you know, you have the hoses and the lines and stuff like that coming through those holes, coming into the HVAC unit and hooking up, you know, and connecting their, you know, indicated, um, you know, circuits and stuff like that. Now, <clears throat> in addition to all that, there are, when you actually look at the few examples of pre-war cars or for, you know, it, for example, in the case of Fallout 4, uh, it, during the initial, you know, pre-war um, scene, you actually can, you know, if you take a moment and you go, you know, photograph or you go take a look at the cars, you'll notice that they actually have a handful of, you know, knobs and potentially either buttons, knobs, or, you know, switches maybe even, um, where they could actually be the controls. Now, um, I did explain this once again in the previous video, but uh, depending on the year and depending on the you know year, make, and model of your car, um, the actual you know knobs or the switches or you know the buttons you use to activate you know either the heating uh, or the air conditioning unit um, in the car. Um, they, you know, they could be powered or they could control the actual HVAC unit in different ways. Uh, like I said, the most common one today is electronic. Uh, we use electronics to, you know, just run a wire from the button, from the switch, from the knob out to, you know, a part called an actuator that will either twist or, you know, typically twist at least. Or, you know, it'll slide or, you know, in any way function so that, you know, it can do what you're asking it to do. And, you know, that's how they work these days. Um, but I did explain that back, uh, back in the, you know, the early 2000s and even, you know, in the 80s and 90s, um, vacuum. Uh, they would use vacuum, basic, basically suction from the motor they would siphon off some of that suctioning power to a tank and they, that would be what would control the the um, the controls and that's what would control the HVAC unit. Another thing is um, cables. I also mentioned in that video that cables are another method. Well, yes, cables are indeed also used to control those doors, you know, within the HVAC unit to, you know, 
channel air from one direction to the other or from one location to another of the unit. And definitely that could also be the case in this car. Um, I'm willing to bet most likely um, it's going to be either the cables or the electronics and um, there's a very specific reason for that but unfortunately as much as I'd like to talk about that now uh, that's really the whole electronics section on its own and I really don't feel like diving in that deep now but it will happen um, setting that aside um, in the previous video I also ex um, presented that heating is simply siphoning off um, hot water or hot antifreeze from the engine to a small radiator located underneath the dashboard and then you know putting a, a fan uh, behind it on one side and blowing that hot air to the cabin and that's how you get heating um, one thing that I did neglect to mention in that video and in that entire section was mid-engine mid-engine rear engine and even hybrid vehicles uh I, hybrid vehicles i may have touched on but if i didn't here it is but first let me start with rear and mid-engine vehicles the way rear and mid-engine vehicles uh typically tackle heating uh believe it or not is actually through pipes really long pipes they can either be from stainless steel aluminum or any other you know metallic materials and rubber hoses they will siphon off from the engine and carry that hot you know fluid all the way to the front of the car to that small radiator behind the dash and obviously you know let the hvac unit do its thing with it and then of course that also means they have a second pipe running all the way from that small radiator at the front of the car all the way to the back where the engine is and re-put it right back into the engine. Um, believe it or not, that's how those systems work. Uh, Porsche, I'm aware, definitely does it this way uh, depending on their you know, year, year make and model. Um, they potentially could have changed it because um, that is, you know, that that's the the chemicals, you know, that's the fluid. You you gotta take that hot, you know, water, hot antifreeze, and you gotta put it, you know, where you need it. Um, and that's just how you have gotta do that. That's just how the cookie crumbles on that. Um, once again, rear engine vehicles are also guilty of this because. Once again, believe it or not, you need heating. Um, it is possible for the heater to be relocated from the front of the car, in front of the driver, to behind the driver, you know, behind the seats, you know, between that, you know, back wall separating the cabin and the, the trunk or, you know, where the engine sits. It is possible to put it there, but um, I don't believe anyone does it uh, at least not to my knowledge just because once again you want to keep that that item heating you want to keep that together with air conditioning it just makes sense it just works <laughs> to you know quote Todd Howard unfortunately <laughs> but uh, it, it it's got to work as one whole unit and the only way to do that is you gotta do what you gotta do, and if it means installing six, eight foot long metal hoses in your car, it, it is what it is. However, that is different to hybrids, particularly the Toyota hybrid systems, or m most likely just the Toyota Prius. Um, they actually developed a heater that at first was run the way I just explained it. Um, they would take, you know, hot water or most accurately, you know, coolant or antifreeze. They would take that from the engine and they would run it. The problem that the engineers ran into was that the heater would not work 
unless the engine was running and if the engine is running to keep the heater going then you're not really being fuel efficient you're not really you know making the you know the, the there's no point to the whole hybrid system if that's the case um so what they did was they developed an electronic version of that heater so you would have that small radiator with the water but you would also have a ele electric version of that radiator uh, either next to it in front of it behind it somewhere along those lines it was somewhere in there so that the engine if the engine was turned off on the car that little electric heater basically would actually run things um, there was a short time uh, that I did read where customers did complain that the actual heater wasn't working properly or that it wasn't hot enough um, and the engineers actually looked into it and they found out that yes indeed it actually was a problem uh, the heating element or the you know small heater in fact wasn't heating up to the proper temperatures or would take too long to heat up to those temperatures and therefore they had to go on this whole engineering spree to redesign it and uh, I cannot remember the year uh, right now but I believe it was around uh, 2016 to 2018 uh, the Toyota engineers finally managed to redesign that little electric heater and finally get it to work hotter work faster uh, and obviously you know satisfy the customers now um, and I believe they may have even recalled the older ones to switch to the newer ones and you know other you know real world car stuff but that's actually another method to adding heating to a vehicle um, that was very interesting to find but you know hey you know you got a problem you got to find a way to fix it now I also mentioned in the previous video uh, different methods for air conditioning and I also happened to mention that Toyota uses basically an electric motor in place of your cars uh you know in, in base in, in 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 replacement of the engine running your air uh ac compressor um and i once again for anyone who saw that please go back and watch the previous video where i talk about you know real world uh hvac units believe me it, it sets a lot of pretense for what i'm talking about um if not just just keep rolling along you know it'll make sense once you go back to that video um, but I at least theorize that most likely the method for air conditioning that the fallout car would have had or should have at least is the same as what Toyota put in the you know Toyota Prius um, which is electronic an electronic air conditioning uh, you know compressor would make the most sense um, just because you know hey there's you know there's a lot they gotta pack in and you know that the space looks indeed limited there and having a motor spin the pulley you know it just seemed like too many working parts um, or as you know some of the engineers like to point out too many points of failure um, that is one thing that I definitely uh, have learned you know um, through you know my studies and not just now but when I was in school it was engineers try to make things work with as little moving parts as possible and taking that into account that definitely would fit in with the fallout universe make the thing you know work as good as long as and as fast as possible without seeing it break you know a hundred different times um and it would just make sense that if the rest of the car has a bunch of electronic parts you know they would probably try to, to squeeze in you know that particular part to be electronic as well 
um, especially with my <laughs> with the little knowledge um, that I have managed to accumulate about the uh, powertrain or you know the engine as you know you might normally call it um, which by the way I'm, I'm, I'm working on uh, but moving on um, that would be the air conditioning system very likely would be like similar to the Toyota Prius which is an electric motor as I explained in the previous video um, then you know from there um, <laughs> you know it, it it really it really just is quite interesting um, you know putting all this together um, for the fallout car to either use you know uh, uh, hoses just really long hoses to take the coolant from one end of the car to the other to give you a heater you know to have an electronic uh, air conditioning uh, very interesting um, you know so to summarize um, that middle section uh, you know in the middle window of the front of the car that has that very big visible grill on the hood uh, I believe it to be the exact you know section of the car where the HVAC unit is you know placed or at least a good chunk of it um, obviously the rest of it is gonna be underneath the dashboard um, obviously you know as I explained earlier the dashboard does have several buttons you know where those could be potentially the controls for it um, the controls are potentially electric um, as well as many of the components to the HVAC unit um, heating is potentially you know uh, once again some long hoses going from from the back of the car to the front or you know if they really are crunched for space for time for development uh, they could just install an electric heater and you know have that run off the electronic side of the car um, air conditioning it's probably and very most likely all tucked into that you know small little space um, we're talking about all the different components that go to an air conditioning system the compressor the evaporator the condenser obviously the condenser being inside the, the dashboard but um, the evaporator orifice tube or expansion valve depending on which system they have you know or which system they decided to use um, all those components are in there and then you know of course we have you know the lines or hoses and everything going from the you know from that portion of the on the front of the car inside the cabin through the various holes that we can see um, on the inside of the you know torn down models um, those could very likely be you know those different holes could be the different you know touch points for the you know ha outside half of the HVAC unit to the inside half of the HVAC unit um, you know where hoses where wires where all that kind of stuff can go through and then you know of course once again the just the challenge of in and of itself of an HVAC unit both heating the interior space of the car as well as heating the interior space of the car you know the challenge of that they would have to be very potent systems you know very top-of-the-line kind of stuff um, that are capable of, of, of keeping you know nice and well regulated temperatures um, you know and and <laughs> you know all that together that that is uh, that is gonna be the you know the heating ventilating and air conditioning the ventilating part I am aware of it I didn't really seem to touch upon um, that's just simply because um, we don't see any popable windows. We don't see any kind of like sunroofs. We don't seem to see any kind of visual, you know, 
very visual popping vents, any obvious vents that lead to the outside. Uh, sadly, you know, either they're blended into the rest of the metal or, you know, they're all covered up in crud and stuff like that. Uh, on top of the fact that, you know, obviously this is only one tiny aspect of the game. Uh, I'm sure no developer really has time there at the Destiny Studios to model and render all of these, you know, important parts. Um, I, I highly doubt, you know, they have one person out of, you know, all their employees dedicated to just getting the, the you know, the textures and the meshes of cars just right so though sadly i could not touch ventilating for that reason now um <laughs> i can see that this has been going on for a little under half an hour um but uh some quick things to kind of get out of the way um first off i hope everyone had a very very good winter break um i know i did um and along with that, I'd like to apologize about December. Uh, unfortunately, December, I did not upload. I hope no one's, you know, kind of wondering what, what's going on with that. But I, I didn't upload. Um, sadly, it's just because uh, December was a rather busy month for me. Um, I had various things going on. Um, you know, life stuff getting in the way. Uh, couldn't really sit down to not necessarily record because i was able to record i was even able to record audio here um unfortunately what i wasn't able to do was edit i couldn't sit down and actually edit these videos together um it just didn't happen um it, it, that's just how it goes um however i will be getting back to you know making videos uh, i will be you know, uh, I I have some things going on, but they're nowhere near as chaotic and as clustered as December was. So um, hopefully I will be able to crank out more videos from now on. Um, and so with all of that out of the way, uh, thank you very much for listening, for watching. Um, you know, I hope at least you're watching because... Uh, I do try to put on some visual cues and, you know, visual representations of what I'm talking about in these videos. Um, but with all that said, thank y'all very much for listening. Um, if you have a comment, like, subscribe, you know, usual YouTuber things. Um, with all of that said, I will see everyone in the next video.